morning, everyone. It's 10 o'clock. I'll call the Paulding County work session to order this May the 9th, 2023. Whether you're watching online or you're in the room here, we're so glad to have you to participate and to be a part of our meeting this morning. Uh, if you bring the, the list forward, uh, and if you got your phone on, silence that, please. It's uh, such a pleasure to, to have uh, Pastor Johnny McBurrs from Shiloh Baptist Church to, to be here. I always enjoy having you, Johnny, and if um, you'll come lead us in our invitation and our pledge, we'd be very appreciative. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and the board. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. Let us pray. Our great God and Savior again, we come in the name of the Lord. Father, we give you thanks for another day. We stand here with humility and thanking you, Lord God, for the grace and mercy that awaken us this morning. Give us the opportunity to praise your name. Father, we lift up this board and the work they are doing in Pauling County. We lift up, Lord God, this great nation, the United States of America. We pray now for your divine intervention with all of the violence going on. We know that you can stop it. We just need to continue to call on your name. Bless us now, Lord God. Remember our first respondents, our policemen, and all of those that don the uniform to protect this great nation, we be so careful to give you the praise, the glory and honor belong to you. We pray in faith, expecting you to move, not by power or might, but by your spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pastor McBurris will uh, commit to pray for you and your church as you go through uh, relocation and the, the other challenges you face. The uh, minutes uh, from April 25th uh, are available, the work session minutes and also the board meeting minutes are available for review. They're located on that back table. Uh, our Team Paulding uh, segment this morning is the Employee of the Month received by Miss Melissa Jones uh, with the Magistrate Court. Let's watch that together. <clears throat> Melissa is one of our deputy clerks. She started in March of 2018 uh, as a part-time clerk. About a year and a half later, uh, we were able to promote her to a full-time clerk. She started out just doing the basic clerk work, but she's now one of the supervisors in the front office. When, when I hired her uh, for the job, she described it as her dream job uh, because she loves detail-oriented type work, which is so much of what clerks do. We just felt like she'd been, been working so hard and doing so well for us that this would be something that she'd really um, imp be impressed with and, and feel appreciated by, so that's why we did. As a person, she's really well liked, really well loved by her coworkers, very loyal, uh, very helpful in any way when people, uh, when people need help. Hey, Melissa, thank you for all your good work and thank you for, for doing everything you do here in the Magistrate Court and, and we hope that this, this is a small token of that shows our appreciation for you and everything you do for not only magistrate court but the citizens of Paulding County. Very cool and well done. <clears throat> Congratulations, Melissa. Invited guests this morning. Always glad to have Randy in the house so, uh, and Tom Cable's with us. So we got another part of the Tally Richardson and Cable group um, under bid awards today. Uh, Item two is to award the purchase of a F-450 uh, with service body to Hardy Ford in the amount of $63,127 and no cents. Ms. Pollard to share with us about that. Good morning. The price of vehicles has gone up tremendously as we all know over the past couple of years. These vehicles were originally ordered in 2022. We weren't able to get them. Um, they're coming in now but they're coming in at a higher price. So um, this one is actually a $50,000 vehicle, this 450 with a $13,000 service body bed. And it's um, 
Hardy actually holds the state contract for this this vehicle, so it's actually being purchased um, off the state contract pricing, and um, it will be used for a fleet, I believe. Yes, this one's fleet, and it's a replacement vehicle for a 96 350, and it's used to service um, our fire department vehicles, so it's used to service larger vehicles than um, your typical um, standard truck or vehicle that we drive other than in the fire department. And item three is to award the purchase of an F-250 to Hardy Ford the amount of $52,003. Again, this is um, was a 2020, 2022 vehicle being requested from Stormwater, and the pricing has just increased. It's, it's more of a standard vehicle. Item four uh, is to award the uh, Taylor Farm Building Improvement and uh, Renovation Project to uh, Osprey Management uh, through a co cooperative agreement with Sourcewell in the amount of $618,007.60. Project's located in post three. It'll be funded by splash dollars and also in, combined with general funds. Director Michael Justice. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Um, as you mentioned, this agenda item has to do with a cooperative agreement with source well it's a national agreement that uh, municipalities can join uh, and be a part of it's similar to the state contract stuff and uh, as in the prices have already been vetted and agreed to as well as the contractors that have been approved to be a part of that program we have a myriad of repairs and, and some renovation work that needs to happen at um, taylor farm park um, with the gymnasium and the administration building uh, it's parts of it um, it's been there for a long time and uh, it's, it's been loved on and uh, needs some attention so this agreement uh, will expedite the process um, we've used the source well agreement before with our synthetic turf fields and it, it went very well so uh, with your approval we'll move forward um, the price is uh, $618,007.60. It will be split. There's some items in there that we can use for SPLOST uh, funding that will be um, eligible for that. And that breaks down to um, $306,363.83 of that total will be used from SPLOST funds. The remainder will come from the general funds. Be happy to answer any questions if you have them. This comment, uh, another example of how valuable the SPLOST fund is for uh, up to upgrading that part. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, we're honored to have uh, James Stokes, a chief appraiser and uh, with the Board of Tax Assessors. Uh, so the Report from committees and department come from James. Uh, he's going to talk about the 2023 digest update and the annual notice of assessment. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, one day I'm going to come to you saying that uh, everything is flat. It's, it's not flat. Um, we're wrapping up our 23 digest. Uh, we're comparing sales that are happening in 21 to sales that are happening in in 22 calendar year uh, for that january 1 23 digest which is required by law uh, just put an example what that digest is, has uh, or what the sales are doing so in uh, the average sale price according to fmls for 21 was three hundred seventeen thousand dollars and 22 that sale price has rose to three hundred and seventy five thousand now, I know with timing and us getting ready to send these assessment notices, you know, we're going to be roughly halfway through a year uh, when people get their notice of assessment and everything. And, and the market has leveled off. The market started leveling off roughly June, July of 22, and that coincides directly with the interest rates. Uh, in early 22, you could get interest rates on a 30-year mortgage for around 3.1%. Uh, at the end, you're looking at a uh, 6.5. Uh, so to just put that in perspective, 
and this is what a lot of people aren't really understanding is if you bought the same house in January compared to December, your house payment is going to be almost $600 different just between 12 months of purchasing that same house. That's not giving any kind of value change over that period either. And that simply just throws a lot of people out of the market. Um, you know, new construction, uh, there was a decline in new construction with their seer count. I think we were off around 20%. Um, but the market is still very strong. Um, it basically, instead of seeing uh, three to five percent month over month, you know, we're we're you know somewhere around half a percent per month. So uh, we're wrapping them up now. Our board of assessors will actually consider all of our data tomorrow morning. Uh, we've got around. We're proposing right around 72,000 notices that will go out May 26. That open up 45 day appeal period. Uh, we'll be glad to talk to anybody about anything, just like any other day of the year. Uh, if you've got a concern about a property or any of your constituents contact you with concerns, just put them in touch with us. We've got staff that are at our own hand. We have staff that are going out into the field. And we, we want these people to understand the process, understand what data we're using, just so they can have that comfort. They might not like it. We don't like it all the time, especially when the government sends you this friendly little notice. Um, but we at least we can make them understand or have them understand uh, what we're doing, what we're required by law. There's a couple things this year that's, that's going to be different. Uh, number one, your new homestead exemptions are going to be in. The voters approved the, the county's new homestead exemption and the school system uh, approved a new homestead exemption. So uh, we've already rolled uh, the school tax exemption. It used to be that at 70 years old, you were school tax exempt. They've rolled it back to age 69. We've already automatically rolled all of those people in. Um, the county they had a $2,000 homestead. It's been increased to $6,000 this year. We've already made all those adjustments. No one has to come in and to apply for these new exemptions. In addition, uh, Governor Kemp had their taxpayer uh, homestead tax credits this year. For whatever reason, the state will not let us add this to the notice of assessment. So what does that mean? You're going to get that assessment notice come June. You're going to see the estimated tax on that bottom based on the previous year millage rate, but with the new homesteads and without the governor's tax credit. So that tax credit, what does that mean to an average person receiving a homestead exemption? It's about a $400 reduction. And so that's a lot that's simply not going to be on that notice. We're including an insert with every single assessment notice that we have to inform these people. Uh, matter of fact, we just got done doing a short video explaining the property tax credits. Uh, and then we have other videos out there that are explaining everything from the whole system to what's going on in the market. And we, we hope to really have all of those things ready uh, by our, our May 26 mailing date. Um, Y'all have any questions? I'd be glad to answer any questions that you may have. So the $400 will be communicated via the insert. Yes, every single assessment notice will have a, uh, a third of a page insert in it. Uh, the way the property owners will get the will get the tax credit is is on the tax bill. Um, the calculations that are that are required for the annual notice of assessments are part of Georgia law, and the tax credits aren't part of that. Um, so we've already talked with uh, the tax commissioner and her vendors. They're handling on their side, and, and those reductions will be reflected there. Of course, everybody's not here this morning, and everybody that's going to watch online uh, is not going to be near the entire a number of people that will get these notices in the mail. Right. Um, so, you know, you always emphasize this is just a notice. It's a it's an uh, estimate, and they won't get the real bill until. Right. The, the estimated taxes 
they put that on the notice right around 2011, right in the middle of the recession. So the estimated taxes are probably the number one question that we ever have, um, simply because it's wrong. It's misleading to the taxpayers because it hasn't given the government authorities the opportunity to adjust their expenditures or their millage rates to account for the value change. So it's automatically misleading to the public. Um, that's why when you guys approve the, the budgets and the millage rates, what, early August, um, the tax commissioner mails the tax bills in September, you know, that's the property tax. You know, it's just, um, that's what happens when you get politicians in. Y'all didn't do that. Y'all didn't have a say in that one. So. I have a question, if it's okay. Please. Okay, um, a couple of questions, actually. Uh, so the mortgage companies, are they going to get that? I know they're going to get the notice of assessment, right? No. no, they don't. Okay. No. All right. All right, they don't. Okay, so they're not going to know when they're charging people that they could actually save them, what, $30? Thirty dollars a month. Is that right? No. It, it, it's a hefty savings this year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with yeah. the with the governor's tax credit plus all yeah. the new exemptions that are coming into play, mm -hmm. uh, the way it works is we're required to send the assessment notices to the January one property owner. Okay. So some people stick it in the mail, send it to their mortgage companies, uh, but the vast majority of the mortgage companies they buy data files. Okay. from our office and the tax commissioner so they know who all they have loans with mm -hmm. and they'll might write one check for 150 people right and then we'll start getting those calls usually around after the first of the year of hey my mortgage went, went up, up x yeah. you know x amount so mm -hmm. um that's how the, the the whole mortgage side of it works okay um I know some states they do send it to mortgage companies, but we don't have the foggiest clue who who has who a everybody's mortgage. Who everybody's mortgage is, right? Okay, right. if they have one, yeah. Okay, great. That that's good to know. I had a uh, saw a complaint on Facebook last night, and uh, so I directed them uh, to you guys and the tax commissioner for information, um, and uh, hopefully uh, they'll get what they need. Um, these videos that you guys have done, which I think is a great idea. Um, where will they be available and are we going to push them out on social media, Facebook, that kind of thing, uh, beyond just having it up for people to go find? Because I think it would maybe save you guys a lot of grief if more people understood. Yeah, you know, they, they, we're really finding um, when we started getting, doing a lot of the videos, uh, you know, the county pushes them out into their normal, normal mm -hmm. spots. Um, but we, we found that Facebook is definitely the one where, that is generating the most, most volume on those things. So any means that we can uh, get it out. I know we have all of them on our, the Q Public website. Uh, there's 100,000 people visit that site every month. Uh, so the v videos are available on top of all the regular means that, that the county has, has out there. Okay, great. Thank you. Anybody else? Thanks right. so much. You got a difficult job, and we're, we're glad we don't have a rookie. We've got somebody with experience. I used to be a rookie, then I got great. <laughs> Y'all have a great day. Thanks. No one signed up for uh, public participation on any of our agenda items today. Uh, the consent agenda consists of. Uh, Several items here. Item five is to adopt uh, the job classification for an assistant director of community development. Item six is to authorize the chairman to enter into a development agreement with Tamarack Land Serenity at Seven Hills LLC. For the Serenity subdivision, uh, the project's located in post four. Uh, item seven is to authorize the county manager to approve payment in the amount of $10,000 to the city of Dallas to establish sanitary sewer service for existing airport facilities and item eight is to declare the attached list uh, listed items uh, as surplus uh, and approve their disposal through auction or trade and that's uh, an attachment that's also located on the table in the back would any of the commissioners like to move 
any of these four consent agenda items for a regular discussion for new business discussion hearing none they'll stay where they are on the consent agenda we have no old business uh, this morning uh, under new business uh, item nine is to discuss action to approve a change order number three for magnum construction in the amount of $12,108 for the sewer force main repair and additional grassing as part of the Mulberry Rock Park Phase Two construction contract. Mr. Michael Justice to share with us about that one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Not used to coming up here twice. Um, Mulberry Rock Phase Two, we're getting close to finishing it. We thought we had enough good dirt and suitable soils. We did not. Um, the rain didn't help us with that, so we had to find some more dirt. So there were several options in that. Commissioner Stover, thank you for helping me work through that. We went across from where the original pile was and dug around and found some uh, that we could use. Um, we also found a sewer force main when we were digging that dirt up that was about 100 feet away from where the drawing showed it to be. So anyway, as part of that, these two things go together. We had to repair the force main. Um, that was an emergency repair that we had to do for obvious reasons. And then we created an area that wasn't included in the grassing scope. So in order to get those covered, it, um, it turns into a change order. Um, and we need your approval to, to get those things done and complete the project. As an update, I spoke with them yesterday uh, curbing should be going in along the roadway, um, hopefully by the end of this week. Uh, the, the water line for the hydrants is going in as well, and then hopefully we'll have asphalt by the end of the month, weather permitting, of course. Um, any questions, I'll be happy to address them. I guess we have experience with Magnum. I'm sorry? I guess we have experience with Magnum. Yes, sir. Construction. Yes, sir. They did the um, Taylor Farm basketball courts and um, pavilion replacement that we did there recently and they've been on this job since the first day any other questions comments for Michael I just want to say thank you to uh, Commissioner Stover and Commissioner Dunn for helping me with this project um, it has been kind of a difficult one phase two so thank you guys for that and thank you michael for yes ma'am getting it done yes ma'am thank you thank you mm -hmm. well that is the conclusion of regular business this morning um public participation on non-agenda items uh, no one has signed up for that uh, the commissioners have any announcements or comments this morning <laughs> I think we need to put on the vote and have Johnny McBurrows have to come by at least once a month for sure to come <laughs> to a vacation. That man's probably one of the top ten busiest in the county. Well, okay. he's got a great voice, and you just feel it every time he speaks. So thank you. He doesn't need a microphone, does he? <laughs> yeah, and, and he actually prays and then stays. He didn't. He didn't uh, go somewhere else on us, so it's always good to have you, sir. Um, I'd like to um, remind everybody that the farmer's markets have opened back up. Uh, the local farmer's markets in Dallas and Hiram, and the Hiram one is on Thursday, and I believe the Dallas one is Saturday. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Anybody know? Uh, so uh, anyway, buy local if you can. It'll save us all. Uh, uh, it'll be good for your health, and it'll be good for our local economy. Virginia, is the Hiram one at the Vince place? It is. It's changed location, so it's at the Vince place right there on 92 across from the tennis courts. Not much parking there, is there? I think there's a little bit more up the hill that they can park on if they need to, but uh, come by and see. Sounds good. Um, we do have a requirement for executive session this morning uh, regarding potential litigation. And I'll entertain a motion that we go into executive ses session uh, uh, for that reason. I'll second. Uh, I was just asking for the motion, but I'll, I'll make oh, okay. it. I'll, I'll make a motion to go into executive session for potential litigation. 
I have a motion by Commissioner Stover. Is there a second? Second. Second. Are we going to adjourn from there? Or do we need to yeah, adjourn? we will adjourn from there, not come back in here. So. Oh, we do? Okay. So who, who gave the second there? You got that, Rebecca? Right okay. We got a motion and a second. All those in favor of going in executive session, say aye. 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 Any opposed? We stand adjourned.